This is Isaiah Cassidy. I'm Mark Lynn, and we're Private Party. And you're listening to the All Elite Podcast. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to episode number 40 of the All Elite Podcast right here on the No Holds Bar Network. We are not live today, unfortunately, due to technical difficulties with OBS and YouTube. Don't know what happened. We tried for an over an hour. We just finally called it and said we're going to do it offline. First time in this podcast history, and episode 40 will forever be marked as the offline day. Uh, this, it's going to be one of those days, Tiff. Uh, but anyways... Guys, welcome to the All Elite Podcast right here on the No Holds Bar Network. Like I said, your source for all AEW wrestling podcast coverage and more right here on, I guess, not YouTube Live, but on YouTube, on Twitter, on Twitch. We are located everywhere for you guys. I'm your host of the show, as always, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. And I'm always joined by my co-host. She is the executive vice president of Giggles, the heartbreak chick. Tiffany, Tiffany, are you ready? Have I a little, have a little bubbly. I'm so ready. And I wish we were doing this live. I'm so pissed because we planned this big episode, and of course, the podcast gods weren't on our side tonight. And we are doing this officially offline. That's okay. Yeah. That's okay. It's okay. It's okay. We're still gonna do this. We're 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 still positive here. Yes. But we're gonna, we're gonna we're gonna get this work and. All right. uh, if you guys are watching this on YouTube, as you can see, the beautiful brand new layout done by our boy Salrax. He's a beast, guys. Hit him up if you guys ever need graphic work. Uh, I told him exactly what I wanted. He made exactly what I wanted, and this is awesome. He's the one who's behind our thumbnails. So hit him up, guys, on, on, on Twitter if you guys ever want some graphic work. He does an amazing job. As you can see down there, it's a status bar that's going to be used starting next week as well. So, uh, yeah, it's such an awesome layout. Got to thank him and give him a shout out each and every episode. So thank you, Salrax. Hey. None of my husbands are on this layout. I don't know. I'm a little salty right now. I think now. you're going to have to add your own husbands. I think you have to get, might have to get add like an MJF there. I mean, he's there. Wait, and Wait a minute. He's not on the list of husbands, okay? I know I upgraded my list of husbands, but he is not on the list of husbands. Okay. okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. I, I didn't ask him which superstars, but I, I love with the Jericho <laughs> one there with the, the championship belt. I love that too. Uh, but anyway, guys. <laughs> list of husbands and list of wives, seriously. <laughs> Which we'll get into today. List of wives yes. is a thing. Uh, anyways, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the All Elite Podcast, episode number 40, 40th anniversary, and we're celebrating today with a little bit of the bubbly. A little bit of the bubbly. Which we'll get into in, in a bit. I have mine sitting on ice right now. There's Tiff's uh, bottle. I have mine sitting on ice, and I'm drinking it the Canadian way today, oh, and that I is know. out of this beautifully designed Tim Hortons coffee mug. Oh, oh yeah, dun, 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 dun. Tim Hortons coffee mug. Dun, 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 dun. This is not that coffee podcast. I'm sorry, but I'm drinking champagne out of it, so it's sort of Canadian because it's got All right. a maple leaf on it. Whatever. But uh, anyways, as you can see as well, I'm wearing the brand new t-shirt from our boys, These Wolves, who make the official theme song of this podcast. And right behind me over there is the Dead to Me t-shirt, which is our official theme song of the podcast. And very, very comfortable. I'm just saying... Uh, our boys, these wolves, these are very comfortable t-shirts, by the way. I don't know what material you guys chose, but beautiful. Love it. I Love like it. Um, I had the AEP one over here, but I didn't. It looks like I put it too high. That's okay. I'll fix it for next week. Um, anyways, guys, uh, episode number 40, as you can see by the title, e, uh, AEW choosing to stick with TV 14 with uh, TNT, which we'll get into in the news and uh, rumors part of the show. Uh, but as always, guys, you know how we do here. 
Make sure you're following us on social media, and there are your social media links, the correct ones to choose from. You have the Facebook All Elite Podcast. You have Instagram All Elite Pod and Twitter at All Elite Pod. If you need help choosing and finding the right podcast to follow, make sure you're going down to YouTube and going to this in the comments, or sorry, not the comments, the description box, and all the links are right there for you to click and follow that easy. And while you're there, hit the subscribe button, give us a like, and hit the notification bell for all upload updates. With that, everything helps. We're very, very close to 900 and our end goal of 1,000, and we'll go from there. I'm sure we'll have another goal after that, but uh, we're going for that 1,000 goal. So help us get there and share it out, guys. Also, you're going to have to check us out everywhere if you want and take us on the go. We're available for everyone. iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spreaker, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Radio, CastBox, and iHeartRadio everywhere. You guys want to take us on the go, you can take the All Elite Podcast with you. And thank you for giving us a five-star rating wherever you were taking us with you and listening on the go. We have a t-shirt store, and I actually have an update for this t-shirt store, Tiff. Um, thanks to our friends at Kayfabe Tees. They've hooked us up with the new program. I'm currently designing the new t-shirt store website. I get full control over it. It's going to have some new designs, new t-shirts, new merchandise, as in uh, coffee mugs. <gasps> have it on there. Tank tops. Ooh. sweaters it's going to be a really cool website so it's on the way and we're going to still continue that all proceeds are going to be donated right to culture city that's right we are uh not making any profit off these shirts guys even currently with the current store right now all proceeds are donated straight to culture city i'll even link you and tab you in the direct and watching me and i'll, I'll even do a periscope video whatever you want me to do i will show you guys that we donate right to culture city in that great cause uh, with them so again thank you to our friends at kfab tees guys kfab tees.com for taking us on and uh, helping us with this really do appreciate everything they do for us so uh, and again another shout out to them and they have their own t-shirt store so check out uh, their stuff as well we have discord if you're interested in discord link is down in the description for you below uh, for you to click and follow awesome way to chat with other wrestling fans out there and friends of the podcast so go and download that and lastly, but not least, shout-outs to our friends, uh, These Wolves, with the song Dead to Me, which is the official theme song of our podcast. Uh, so, again, thank you to These Wolves, and thank you for the T-shirts, me winning the contest, and then throwing in the extra one. Really do appreciate it. And uh, they actually made a song, or they actually, uh, another song they sing is actually a theme song for another friend of ours' uh, podcast in the community. Uh, so, congratulations to them, and congratulations to these wolves getting their name out there in the wrestling world, man. This is really big for them. So, again, thank you to these wolves. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> was that you or was that Pharaoh right there? Because I can see Pharaoh yeah, there. Yeah, but, but where's where's our mascot though, Tiff? Where's where's, where's Fat Pharaoh? Did you, where's did, Fat he, Pharaoh? He, he, he did not eat him. No, he's right here. Okay, there he is. There he is. There's, there he is. What's going on, Fat Pharaoh with a PH? He's good. He's he's slacking. I don't slacking? know. I th mm. I think he's like having sympathy pains for me because I've been having issues and having sympathy been... pains. <laughs> gotcha. I don't know. We're just gonna go with that because I can't work out because my knee's shot. But oh, um, that's okay. You know, You'll get there. We'll, we'll we'll you know we'll get back to full gear. So. But. <laughs> He's got to look good, like Pharaoh over here. Mm -hmm, so. Exactly. Um, so why don't we start off this podcast with a bang of Let's some sort. Let's do it. And why not start yourselves with a little <laughs> bubbly. <laughs> That's right. Oh, my. <laughs> We're going to have a little ourselves a little bit of bubbly right here in the podcast. And I chose the mumble number five version of the Jericho uh, bubbly, which is my favorite so far out of those memes. And uh, that's what we're going to do today in the show. We're going to have ourselves a little bit of bubbly. We told you guys we're going to have, this is going to be a fun episode, an interactive episode. And uh, myself and Tiff got ourselves a little bit of the bubbly. So you saw okay. Tiff's bottle. Just so you know, I'm scared to death to open champagne. I put a tweet out that I'm really afraid to pop bottles. I mean, she says that too, but I haven't opened champagne in so long. And this is a big <laughs> bottle. Like, you guys can see this here on the air. Drunk. I bought a little one. But... What, what's yours called? And for you champagne enthusiasts out there, just saying once right now, don't make fun of us. I don't know. This seems like you would know with your Canadianness or something. Why like, would could you just, you just assume because I'm Canadian? Yeah, you speak French, all right? Oh, so, okay. Ooh, know. that. Yeah. yeah. Mm. <laughs> I have a uh, since you're um, your New York and Sicilian ass spumante <laughs> bambino oh peach flavored champagne, little bubbly. 
So we're going to do this here. I'm scared, Kyle. Okay, the dog's behind me. Okay. Oh, so, okay. Okay, I'm really scared. I don't know where to open this. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, that wasn't too bad. <laughs> wow. I think it's because if you shake it and do it, it, it creates that bigger. Oh, mine comes in a nice. Con what the heck is this? Look at this. What is this? What is? That's what's going on up here? I twist. Okay. okay, the metal. Okay, I gotta teach you how to do this. Okay, I'm the so un untwist okay. the metal. Untwist the metal part. Okay. Okay. Take that piece off. Okay. <laughs> this is opening champagne 101, guys, okay? All right, there All you right. go. Okay, now what you do is you make sure you tip it away because you don't want it to hit you in the face. Like this? Yeah, let's do that, Kyle. Okay. Like, perfect, okay? Okay. All right. Do you have. I, I do a rag. Oh, nah. but you don't probably need to do it because my friends mm. don't. But you have to go from like the bottom of the cork and kind of twist it a little bit, not like rough, oh. like a little bit. It will slowly, like the pressure will let you release it. Oh god! Do it the right thing. Do it for the bottom of it. Yeah, that's how I do it. <laughs> I'm so scared. Lovely. Just make sure it's not pointing at you or anything like that. You're gonna have to do it with your shirt. Oh, it's starting to loosen a little bit. Oh boy. Just keep going. You got it. Don't laugh at me. <laughs> I gotta give you shit, okay? Okay, it's like Just you can see going. it's like halfway there. All right, all right, I'm keep so going. scared. Don't be scared. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's gonna see that replay. A little bit of bubbly. <laughs> That might be a slow motion replay. All right. All righty. So, uh, are we cheersing? <laughs> yes, we will once I pour my little bubble. Little, little bubble. Pour a little bit of bubble. I'm gonna be annoyed with that. <laughs> mm, it actually smells pretty good. Not gonna lie. So, smells Tiff, good. cheers. Cheers to 40 more to episodes. And more in, above that. Uh, yes. You know what? It's not actually that bad. Mine tastes pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. I grabbed the, I grabbed the, I grabbed the good bubbly. It's like that coffee podcast all over again. Okay, mm. so that's actually delicious. I don't know what what happened to the cat. By the way, it's just just gone <laughs> into the atmosphere. It's just gone. I was concerned that I was gonna like pop McDuff or it was gonna mm. bounce off my my shrine or something. Like, no, but thank God McDuff's behind me. So it's good. I actually, this is a good one. It, it's got a nice peach flavor too. I love it. All right. Well, it's a little bubbly for le, le champion. <laughs> I'm gonna suffer with this for one. le champion. <laughs> actually, you're the champion currently, the queen. So I am. You are la champion. I didn't get to get a new crown because, guys, you know, like I've been messed up with my uh, my knee. But uh, here, here we go. The burger queen. So when I get when I gotta get a chance because when I do Halloween, I gotta get a costume. So I will go find a new crown. You know, but I'm actually lucky right there. I'm just gonna bring this up before we move on. I aimed it that way. My light is actually right there. I could have literally See? knocked out the light bulb and I would have been dark for the rest of the episode. I don't have <laughs> enough fucking problems. Today. Yeah. <laughs> Anywho, anyway, um, little move on. A little bit of with a little bit of bubbly. Yeah, I might be drunk by the end of this episode. We'll see. <laughs> um, champagne like messes you up like really quick. It's it's so, it's I, nice. This is a nice champagne. So I highly I, suggest if you guys have your uh, spumante bambino, pick up a little bit of that bubbly. Kyle shit, because the shit. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho. <laughs> um, Let's move on here to uh, Full Gear. Full Gear. So it's the announced pay-per-view, as we know. Uh, I'll transition on the screen for you guys right now. Live on pay-per-view November 7th. Or not November, it's November, oh, November 9th, 7 p.m. At the Royal Farms Arena in Baltimore, of all places. I'm surprised they chose Baltimore, but whatever. It is what it is. No no offense to you Baltimore people. Um, tickets were on sale. And, uh, yeah. Um, just going to say this, guys. Yeah, we're going. Yes. We're going. So myself and Tiff. <laughs> Kyle and Tiff live in Baltimore. Oh, boy. Finally. I don't know if Baltimore is ready for us, but uh, the podcast is going to be at full gear in full effect. Yes. We're going to be together again. Mm -hmm. Wow. Twice in one year, Kyle. And uh, so if you guys are going to full gear and you know about it, 
look us up. Make sure you're following us on social media. Most importantly, that's where we're going to be posting most active stuff on there. Um, I'm coming in on the Saturday. I don't know when Tiff plans on going, um, but I depending on what time we get there on the Saturday, I'm not sure. I'm, I want to go to StarCast. I'll probably just buy the basic general admission just to go check it out and then uh, just hang out there the rest of the day until we go to the event. So uh, just keep an eye on it, and we'll, we'll, we'll update as we get there. We're still ways away from November, so but we're going officially. Yeah. We're, going yeah. to, we're going to uh, we'll be together. Full gear. We got uh, tickets. Uh, pretty good tickets, actually, where I'll be on the hard camera side in that one section that's right there, the 100 section there, where they call it the 200. Uh, so we got really, really good tickets for it. Um, so uh, I'm excited. I'm excited. I can't wait. So um, I'm going to get you headphones so, you know, so when I start screaming oh, okay. at husbands, okay? Gotcha. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. I got you. No problem. Okay. Uh, so we have two announced matches for uh, Full Gear. The one is the the official rematch is set for Full Gear Moxley versus Omega, which uh, I'm excited for. I actually thought they might uh, try to do it for DC, but I'm glad that uh, we're getting it. We're getting this at least at a pay per view. I mean, it deserves a pay per view. I'm excited because this was something that I was supposed to get at All Out. So at least like you and me will be together and and we'll get to witness this together, which I'm excited for. And we have a championship match they announced. Jericho is going to defend against Cody. And this sparked up a lot of controversy I've seen because of people saying that Cody Rose doesn't deserve it and all this jazz. And I'm sitting there going, like, he's the only one that's 3-0 and poten- or potentially 3-0 and or 4-0, and whatever it's going to be after he beats Sammy because I can't see Sammy Guevara winning against Cody in D.C. unless something happens. you got to make him look strong. I mean, I know you're probably, like, excited for this match. I'm kind of – not that I'm, you know, against it. I'm not as excited for it. But in reality, who would you have Jericho face at this pay-per-view? Right? There's I can't think of anybody. That's the thing. People have, like, said, like, Luchasaurus and stuff. I'm like, they're in the tag team division. You can't just can't just break that off to go for the title just because you want this guy to do it. Uh, and then people are saying Pac. And I'm like, again, like, Pac's got his thing with Hangman. Like, they have their own thing. So it just right. kind of makes it's kind of like narrowed down to Cody, right? So I um, I mean, I would have liked to see a continuation between Hangman Page and him. I would have been fine with that, but I mean, I you know we have to be different here. So mm-hmm. I, look, I think it's going to be a really good match. I'm not mm-hmm. saying that it's not. Am I excited? No, but I wasn't excited about certain other matches at all out either. So mm-hmm. um, it might be a match that we just we just need. So. Right. Um, so update on our full gear challenge to get the full gear. I suck. I haven't really started yet. I've kind of mealed. I've kind of like condensed mealed so far. I haven't done any exercise, so I plan on getting that up and going soon. But I have been portion mealing. Like I've been cutting out like sugar, and I've been cutting out. Well, except for the champagne today. Um, <laughs> I've been cutting out like you know just bad food and just been eating and portioning my size. So I've been feeling a little bit better. I've been getting back on that water kick. I've been drinking lots of water and pissing like crazy, so uh, it's a good thing. Um, so we'll see. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to get back on the exercise kick. So that's where I'm at. And we know with you, uh, I lost the pound though. <clears throat> oh. Sorry, I did lose a pound. I don't know how I lost the pound. I thought we're going to Chicago that I would have gained all this weight, but I think it was all the walking that I did, and that's probably what kind of did in my knee as well. Um, so I did take an injection today. Um, thank you guys who like reached out to me and checked on me. Like I feel okay. I feel a little better, but it's starting to bother me again. So that's usually how the shots right. work. I have not, I tried to go to the gym last week and I just couldn't do it with, with my knee and everything. So I did little stuff here in my house, Okay. Uh, but I've lost the pounds. So I'm, you know, so that's, that's good. So it's better than gaining weight. Golf clap. So, you know, hopefully once my knee feels better. <laughs> You know, I'll be a uh, hardcore. Yeah, so that's where we're at with the full gear. Uh, DC update. I'll be, if you guys don't know, I'll be at the first AEW taping on TNT for DC. Um, we've been reached out asking if I'm doing like, some sort of meet and greet. Um, I don't know. <laughs> so at this point right now, all I can say is that myself and my buddy No Self Phil, who's coming with me, they plan on driving very, very early that Wednesday morning, getting there and checking into the Airbnb and then doing some sightseeing because we both of us have never been to D.C., so we kind of want to get some sightseeing in before the event. I imagine it's not going to take us that long, and we're probably going to eat somewhere before the event 
and I'm imagine we're gonna try to find a bar. So when we figure out which bar to f that we're gonna pick, I will tweet it out. Maybe I'll make a graphic or something. If you guys are there in that area, you want to come meet me or just say hi, have a beer, whatever you want. I'll tell you where I am, and you can meet me there. Slide into the DMs. That's what yeah. I did. I, they're I mean, open. Great. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah. We didn't do a meet and greet. And then if anything, if you can't get Kyle, like message me because mm -hmm. then I'll hit him up because Kyle, Kyle, I have other ways of getting to Kyle. So uh, if you don't go into his uh, personal Twitter, or you mm -hmm. could write the AEP, or just write me, and then I'll, I'll just hit him up for you guys. But um, but I guess you and me should really do something in um, Baltimore. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to find where the good bar is because. I've heard some things about Baltimore and being Canadian, and then I've talked to a couple of people who are like, "Oh yeah, Baltimore. You better be careful in Baltimore." Oh God, like, whatever, you know. <laughs> but, uh, but I mean, I I think pretty much what we'll do is like maybe we'll just at Starcast because that's just what I did it all out. Okay. I was just at Starcast. I was like, I'm at Starcast. Come find me. Say so hi. As people were messaging me, and honestly, I was just running into people. Mm -hmm. That's what happened to me. So you know, maybe we'll just do that. Like maybe we'll just go to the oh, bar. So good. That's Starcast. <laughs> yes, you're making me want to do another Doc Coffee podcast with you. Mm. Just saying, but <laughs> mm. anyway. Anyways. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's the DC update that I have for you guys uh, for that. So we'll get into uh, around the AEW world. Uh, we basically go and let you guys know what's going on in the AEW world. Uh, first thing is, Tiff, are you ready for this? I'm ready. Let's we go. have new merch alert. Ah! New merch alert. <laughs> ah! Watch out. Alarms. What's going on? What's happening? What's going on? Is this the perch? Is it the perch? <laughs> uh, no, believe it or not, it's not the perch. <laughs> this is new merch. I want to see Alert. the new merch. Let's see it. So uh, we have lots of new merch in the AEW world. First things first, to our friends overseas in the UK, you got some new merch in your store. Some new AEW t-shirts. There they are. Five brand new t-shirts in the UK. AEW store is wrestlingstore.co.uk. You can find your AEW latest t-shirts. You have the John Moxley t-shirt from uh, All Out. So basically they're all from All Out. You have the Omega t-shirt, Cody Rhodes, Hangman Page and Jericho the You're Welcome t-shirt. So if you're in UK wondering about AEW new merch, there you go. Five new t-shirts added to that store. Wrestlingstore.co.uk So uh, to our friends overseas, there you go. Awesomely added this week. None other than a little bit of bubbly. bubbly. <laughs> which we're having right now. A little bit of that bubbly. Hang on, I gotta make that a little sip. Wait, so, yeah, I was just gonna say this. Like every time we say a little mm. bit of the bubbly, do we take a sip? Yeah, of the little I guess bit we're making a drinking game out of this tiff. God, <laughs> I feel like we should do this in Baltimore. Look at Jericho in this picture, though. <laughs> just... Awesome, like. Oh, he's awesome. People criticizing him for being the first champion. Like, give me a break. I returned the belt. You know, I was holding it at yes. all out. You know, I'm sorry. I felt bad. Kyle told me to return it. So, yeah, so you know. Tiff, Tiff, <laughs> Tiff was the one that threw it on the side of the road. Everybody, I don't believe what you reported. Tiff was the one that just <laughs> hucked it. So. That damn New Yorker. <laughs> yeah. So Jericho's got it. He's happy he has it back there. And uh, he's got a t-shirt. That's uh, it's it, it, Apparently, it's doing very well on pro wrestling yeah, tees. It wasn't even like out for like 10 hours, and it was their most bought shirt, apparently. That's insane. Yeah. That's insane. If it's there in, in, in D.C., I'm buying one for sure. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure um, you can get that stuff. Some other new merch. Darby Allen, Your boy Darby's got a new t-shirt. Boy, I like it. Uh, and then uh, welcome to Britsburg, Britt That's Baker. Awesome. That's a cool it? one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, two other T-shirts, or I guess one T-shirt and one sweatshirt. Uh, Dustin, Dustin Rhodes, Dusty. Oh, yeah. Dustin. That's hot. I actually like that one better. Never than give up. Me. Never look back. Keep stepping. Mm -hmm. That's a very cool looking one. Yeah. Uh, and then oh god, I'm I I seen this and I drooled. Kenny Omega <laughs> zip up hoodie. If it's anything like the AEW one that I have, that it's going to be super comfortable. But actually, all all the pro wrestling uh, store tees, they're so comfortable. Even the one in the crate that I did, they're so comfy. So I might actually buy this as well because I was living in the AEW one last year. <laughs> so maybe I need to like change it up. So, but I kind of like the the Kenny Omega logo in the oh, back. Like, this is why I'm going broke here. <laughs> Wrestling makes you broke. It does. I'm it it makes you extremely broke. I'm selling a kidney between indies no. and... Whoa. W <laughs> no. Kyle, you wouldn't give me a kidney if I needed one. 
Sorry. <laughs> Whoa! I ain't toasting you anymore. I know my health care is free, but it would take me eight, 18 years to get a new one. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Anywho. I'm just kidding. I was kidding. We're yeah, Stop. Okay. Stop. Let's... He let me, like, die on the ground. Like, it's terrible. <laughs> I'm gonna take my sip of the bubbly. <laughs> Lib -lib -lib Alright. Oh, I said it. <laughs> what the that's how Jericho would drink it, so that's how I'm gonna drink it. Like, Farrell, you want to zip? <laughs> <laughs> wow. What? The, I, I hope Pete is not watching this. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. So Anywho. Mm -hmm. Uh something interesting came about today, Tiff. Yes. And I messaged you and I'm like, This is big because I parent according to someone on Twitter and tweet us out this happened last week. I'm like, why didn't you mention it last week then? <laughs> <laughs> we were live last week. <laughs> or was this after we were live? <laughs> I did see it and, and like I did forget when you told me. Anyways, so. for you guys that don't know, Marty Skrull whoop, on whoop. whoop whoop has been followed. Hey. On Instagram, by none other than AEW Wrestling, the official one, and this is interesting. This is very interesting. This this just stirs the pot because Mr. Marte Monty Skrull is officially a free agent come November, and there's already been talks of two lead hands right now of AEW and WWE getting there and there's obviously there's two sides of it there's the AEW side where his friends the elite are all there and of course you know you'd want to be in a wrestling company and they see how big it's getting and there's still unfinished storylines with that or you can go to WWE which you, you know they're probably going to pay him a buttload of money but then you're also looking at the negative you're probably not going to be on TV <laughs> or rather and you'd be on AEW TV and you're featured more heavily right well, and you're with your friends friends yeah that's what I was going to say his friends are not all dead but despite what he says no, no. I'm sure he was there at All Out in the background. But, but, I mean, we could look at it saying, like, oh, yeah, AW confirmed. We can be like those people. Or we can just say they're just following for the hell of it. Well, if you watched, I mean, we'll get into it later. But if you watch Being the Elite, somebody was wearing a Marty shirt. Oh, don't yell at me. Do I bell shame myself? Shame. Okay. <laughs> I know you were not even live. Shame. Mm. <laughs> Prepping for this podcast, ladies and gentlemen, I forgot to watch Being the Elite. How do you forget? And I saw something funny, and I'm like, I have to watch it, and I just forgot to watch it. Because something happened to Kenny, which we'll get into in a bit. Uh, but yeah, pretty interesting about Marte. Mm -hmm. I'm interested to see where they go from here with that. Um, are you interested, Tiff? That what? Are you still on the boat that he might come over? Oh yeah, a duh! Like, come on! Oh, like, don't don't <laughs> duh me! I'm just asking. Like, maybe you, you change your mind. Say, like, oh no, I'm happy for him for whatever he chooses. No, screw that. He his his hot ass, his hot single ass. Which anybody, if you see him, give him my number. Hot uh, single ass. <laughs> All right. Give him my number. Don't tell Anthony. Uh, give him my number. <laughs> okay. All right, Shh, gang going. Apparently, you know, if, if you're watching this, it's not like we can keep it a secret. You just said it. I'm sorry. It doesn't matter. Anthony's still number one. It doesn't matter. I'm just saying. Just like, for that, have yourself a no. little bubbly. Oh, I thought you were gonna shame me. Like, like. do it. I said it. Oh, sorry. sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I know it's gross, but I'm sorry. Should have bought the peach one. Well, whatever. <laughs> no, but but yes. Yeah. So give him I'm my excited. Note. I'm excited, though. I'm totally excited. If we're at full gear and that's where he makes his debut, I can only. It's probably where I'd need the headphones. Yes, he's gonna need headphones because I've already done it to him at G1. So I can. Yeah. If he oh, comes, man. He, he comes out during the Jericho and Cody match. Oh. <laughs> starts a feud with Cody, like not with like Jericho retains, but he starts a feud with Cody. Being the president of AW and the one that didn't bring him along. There you go. Freaking shit writes itself. Yeah. Kyle's going to have to be like this. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. I'll bring special earplugs. Special tip earplugs mm -hmm. when she's um, around the list. I'm going to be like, I'm going to be like Pharaoh back at all out when the 
fireworks went off. Yes, that's gonna be Kyle's gonna be running. I I did it to my friend the other day. I was like, cover your ears, but like, yeah. So if any of my list of husbands, um, Orange Cassidy, Matt Jackson, and Trent, if they come out, you know, during because it's, we don't have all the announcements yet, but uh, Kyle, co- cover your ears. Okay. <laughs> Okay. And then, and then it's gonna be worse if Marty comes out. So I'll just say, <laughs> you've All been right. warned. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. Um, so if we know you have your thing, as you are saying, list of husbands. I'm I'm salty about. This. I don't know why you're salty because you so you've even agreed that I should start my own list, and uh, it's become official, ladies and gentlemen. I have made my list. We're at we're at eight so far. So that's what I'm gonna start at is eight. I don't know if I'll add some in the future or take some out. I'm doing eight. Today, we're going to have the reveal from 8 to 5. And then next week, we're going to do 1 to 4. Hopefully, we're live next week so you guys can get 4 to 1. We're going to get you 8 to 5 this week. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, the official Kyle Masters list of whys <laughs> from 8 to 5. <laughs> Bam! <laughs> there they are. Starting at number 8, Dr. Britt Baker, DMD. All right. All right. I, I like that start so far. She's, uh, I mean... She's she's hot, baby. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. Yeah. So uh, she's got to be on the list of wives for sure. We got Brandy on there. Brandy Rhodes. Of course. How could she not be on the list of wives? God, she's gorgeous. My God. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> she might be on my list of wives. I don't know. <laughs> Cody, man. Lucky, lucky, lucky guy. Yeah. Number six, Tennille Dashwood. I've always yeah. had a thing for Tennille in the past, especially when she was Emma back in NXT. That's when I first had a thing for her. Um. So yeah, I've always had a thing for her, man. She's uh, definitely on my list of wives. So she comes in at number six, and at number five, the one, the only, Tessa Blanchard. I'm a little surprised that she's number five and not higher because she's fucking hot. I know she is, but uh, you guys will tune in next week to see who makes the top four, and you uh, can see why she's been uh, bumped down to number five. And I think number one is going to surprise everybody here. So yeah. uh, I've I- already showed Tiff. Tiff, sorry, yeah, no. I don't know if I approve of his top four because I actually – it was funny because one of them I totally forgot about um, because I know who Kyle likes. Uh, then he – I said to him that I was surprised Here's that one of them wasn't the first one and then he <laughs> rearranged again and I was like, I do not approve of the top four. Well, <laughs> I don't need your approval. <laughs> well, screw you then. Well – I'm the owner of the list of husbands, okay? That's, that's fine. You can own that. I will own the list of wives. You can <laughs> have that. I created the list of husbands. You don't own you list of. That's not a thing to own. The list of husbands, and then, and then I started even with the list of wives for all the guys and stuff like that. But, you know, it was my thing. And if you go back to, what was it, Fight for the Falling, I said to you it was my thing. And that you didn't have to start the list of wives, okay? Mm-hmm. But, pfft, whatever. <laughs> That's what you get. <laughs> no. <laughs> wow. Like children no. here. Mm-hmm. Anyways, that's my list of wives. All I don't right. care if it doesn't grant an approval from her over here, but <laughs> that's my eight to five. Next week, guys, you'll get four to one. Cannot All right. wait. Let us know what you guys think of his list of wives in the comments. I know. Down in the comments below. You can see this right here. Real Kyle Magic. You can tweet me. You can DM me. Whatever. Let me know. I- yeah, let us know, and uh, if you want, let us know in the comments below. What? Who are your list of husbands? Who are your list of wives? Mm-hmm. I want to know. I was in a car with a bunch of friends, and we legit had an argument for an hour about the list of wives. It's a fun game wives. you can create here. It re- it was really bad. It was, Trademark. I was really going at it with somebody, <laughs> with one of my friends. I was like, because we did both, and I was like, who would be on my list of wives? And then I would ask the guys who would be on their list of husbands. So, I mean... No shame. I think eventually, like, maybe one day me and Kyle will actually do this together. We'll flop it. And I'll do the list of wives, and you okay. do the list of husbands. Okay. I already okay. know, like, my top three. Okay. So. I like it. I like it. We'll do that at a later time. Later time. Later some, time. Some later time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, how about we do some uh, Being the Elite? All righty. All right. So, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, let's get into uh, the Being the Elite review. Yeah. Elite. The elite, <laughs> the the elite. Mm-hmm. I love it. Mm-hmm. All I right, love it. Uh, so. it, interesting episode this week, uh, especially titled "There's Something Wrong with Kenny." But unfortunately, Bella Shane myself already. I forgot to watch, which I'll tune in tomorrow. Uh, but I'm gonna let my co-host. She deserves to do some work here. 
uh, oh, and oh. Uh, do the review for. <laughs> I've been uh, doing this the last couple of weeks. You noticed that, I right? I know, I know. But again, like, and I feel bad because, like, I kind of always play off of Kyle, and I never know this, and I don't give enough notes. So this is going to okay. be like a brief. I'm sure people are not sitting here waiting for us to do like every little detail. They just kind of yeah. want a general so, synopsis of so, what happened. Apologies if I'm terrible at this, but I usually just write little things because I play off of Kyle. Um, so we opened up being the elite with Brandon Cutler, Brandon Cutler, which me and Kyle always tag Cutler, him. Cutler footage. footage, and he's in on it. Like he likes it every time mm. that we go uh, Cutler footage. So. He, I don't know if he realizes, but when we go to Starcast in Baltimore, as soon as we see him or I'm now, we're both gonna yell Cutler okay. footage. We yes! gotta make sure we say okay. footage, so he knows yes. it's us from a distance. Yes. Well, he knew who I was when I saw him. We gotta yell the... Cutler footage. Okay, but yes, that's the thing. Me and Kyle have already tweeted him, and we said we're gonna take a group picture together. So I will pay, Kyle will pay, and then we'll do a group picture together. If she's as not, well. she's not. But I really hope Denise is there too, so we can get her in on it too. Oh, we I gotta really tweet want her. Yeah. Yes. Let's tweet her. Hopefully. Okay. I don't know what the thing with the children, though. That's the thing, right? Okay. We're going to ask her anyway, yeah. so because, like, we do need to meet her. But anyway, uh, Brendan Cutler was on the phone with his wife. And then we had Arthur and, um, Arthur Trevor, like, pointing at Brendan Cutler, you know, making fun of him. Oh, and... no. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> Poor then, guy. I know. It was it was pretty, like, oh, no. And then MJF was like, you can't be making fun of this guy without um, – <laughs> Without me, you know, he's always with like the whole nerd yeah. stuff. Um, so pretty much like Brandon Cutler left and MJF said, he goes, I like you guys. He goes, want to go to Applebee's and make fun of poor people? <laughs> oh, he's such a savage. I love MJF. This is how he's been in the indies here in New York. It's just he stays in character. He's freaking amazing. But I just I love this little bit. I love I we need more Brandon Cutler. Hashtag book Brandon Cutler. Uh, <laughs> but it was it was, you know, like pretty much. But what do you think, Kyle, about this? Like MJ, I'm talking about like going to Apple. I, I heard that because I was wondering what people were talking about on Twitter. I'm going, what the hell happened? Did someone catch MJF in an Apple piece somewhere? <laughs> and I heard he like yelled at a 10 year old kid or something. I don't know if this was being the elite but this is no like but this is what he does he's yeah. done it in other indie wrestling i've seen him i've seen him i mean you guys seen like months ago i went to create a pro and he made this boy cry because he took the scarf off him he spit in it and then he threw he it back his character <laughs> yeah he really does he totally he like is legit a savage so but i just i'm a big fan of mjf so um, then we move on. So we have like Matt and Nick talk. They're icing themselves. Uh, they're talking about like, you know, this that they're not doing this, mat, you know, the ladder match again, um, that they're feeling it, and that everybody was like messaging them and calling them, making sure that they were OK. Even Rich uh, Rick Knox was like, oh, you guys like scared me. Don't do that again. Uh, Dana Dana said she was clear, 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 uh, clenching her teeth <laughs> during it. See, it's a little bit of the bubbly. It's making me <laughs> Um, so yeah, they said that they learned their lesson and they're gonna start training for the tag team tournament. Which I don't know. I'm so mixed mm. about this tournament. Um, and because I they're facing our boys' private party in the first <laughs> round. It's driving me crazy, Kyle. Because like I said, and I told private party, I told Isaiah, I told Mark Quinn, I was like going forward on our podcast. I don't care who you're up against. You guys are always going to be picked from me. But like I was really thinking about this the other day, Kyle, and I was like, but it's the Young Bucks. What if you they know? pull up the upset? Like, what if private party pulls up that upset? Like I would love for private, like I think private party needs this, mm -hmm. that private part is going to be big and we've we've tweeted them and we're like and especially me i'm like bring the gold home to new york you know like i'm a new yorker they're new yorkers like i was like you need to bring these tag team titles home it would be a good rub from oh. the young bucks right to, to like yeah. not make them not be automatically in the finals people are like okay yeah they're they're up they're the vice presidents of the company they're going to put themselves in the finals like it would be insane it would be an incredible uh like underdog move and it would be it would put private party in the map which we know they've been saying it forever with this company since it first started their main one of their main goals is to be putting over talent that doesn't get seen a lot like private like new and upcoming talent like private party they want to be again the, the alternative to be there to be this the complete opposite of that they keep their they keep pushing their their same and older stars and forgetting about their young guys i'm sure aw's looking at these okay we gotta do the opposite opposite of this we gotta push our younger stars here and like a, a team like private party 
that's they're the team young, to push. They're young, they're athletic, mm-hmm. you know, they're hungry as shit. Um, and they're the and best I, tag team finishers I've ever seen. I oh, Gin and Juice, I fucking love it. I love it. I love them so much. Okay, I love them so much. So much. How so much? much that I am going to Pennsylvania Saturday to see Mark Quinn team up with Anthony Gango, number one husband, um, for their last tag team Ooh. together in the Indies. Uh, so I'll let you guys know about that next week um, because it is AEW kind of related and, and it's with number one husband. So, um, yeah, I'm actually driving to Pennsylvania like a nut. Um, but <laughs> but, yeah, I, 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 I can see this going either way where we go into our probably I don't know if we're going to do predictions for this, but I don't know. I can see this going either way. I think the Young Bucks can put o- I mean, they're already over a private party. Yeah. But um and it would be great, especially that they lost that House of Glory, but they're amazing. Um, and it would be great to put them over to move into That's the, the thing, too, because so Young Bucks won at that House of Glory show. Right. I don't think they're going to be the team to go make them go 0-2 against them. That just doesn't make sense to me. But the other thing, too, is like, but they're the Young Bucks. I know. That's the <laughs> other like, thing, right? That's why I keep arguing with myself that I'm like, but I could see the Young Bucks kind of winning because you need the Young Bucks to be into the tag team tournament mm-hmm. um but but i root as much as i love the young bucks i have to root for private party here and you're not alone i'm gonna be rooting for them too you're gonna, be, you're gonna double the double the root here yes, yes private party is in the house so <laughs> so hopefully i'm still not on the shit list i'm gonna forever think that i'm in the shit list with mark quinn but <laughs> he said no but i don't know i think i'm still on the shit list but <laughs> it'll be okay so yeah it'll be all right He'll be okay. He'll be okay. So moving on with me, Billy, we had, I, and this is the clip you saw with the best friends and Orange Cassidy and Peter Avalon and that they were sitting, they were eating and Rick, Rick Knox came in and he was telling them that they need to clean up, that the forks are on the wrong side of the knives and the napkins and everything and start <laughs> counting them out and they had to like go and like fix everything. I love it. I'm, I'm loving this. So I'm wondering also... Okay, and I think a lot of people are talking about this on Twitter and social media. Are we getting triple tag team titles? I feel like Ooh. we're building this, like New Japan. I mean, it's a thing to do now, it looks like, with these companies. A lot of companies are starting out with these uh, trio tag team titles. We've seen in New Japan, Ring of Honor. There's another company, it's escaping me, that has one too. So maybe they'll go that route. I could see. I mean, they just, why would they put Orange Cassidy with them if they weren't going that route? You ha- You can do stuff like that. You have... SCU is a trio team. You have the Luch, or uh, not Lucha. Um, well, I mean, if they brought in Laredo Kid, depending on his contract situation, there's a three. Um, but I think they want to keep Lucha Brothers as a two. Uh, you have uh, a boy, and, uh, uh, two boys, and their, and their dinosaur. You have uh, potentially a third member of the Dark Order if they ever wanted to do that. It, there's potential everywhere. So who knows? I, I mean, for to do something like that, Totif, you would have to have two different tag team divisions. Maybe I don't know if that's a not necessarily kind of thing. Maybe you can do both. I don't know. I mean, they could. I don't know. I mean, it. I. I would. Th- I would love to have another like you know like a trios tag team like because we are focusing on tag team. So even if we're getting the trios, like I'm excited for that. And we've only got forty percent of the roster. So what is that sixty percent? All right. Yeah. So I'm excited for the future. Um. But yeah, so, but I, you know, and, and I've told Kyle this and I've told multiple people this, that I was never really into, I'm sorry, McDuff is like here, like jumping at me with a toy. Um, but I'm, I've never was really huge into tag team wrestling, but like, I'm so excited for it. Like AEW has got me. That was their goal. That's AEW's goal. That's what they, that's what, they, that's what they're doing. Like, I feel like everywhere else it's got like, there are different things. This, I've never been so excited for tag team wrestling. The tag team wrestling in is just at the Oh my god, I can't even talk about it. But it's a little bit of bubbly. Oop, I said it. <laughs> but uh, like the they're hungry. Like I'm excited. This is this, I've been so more excited for the tag team wrestling even in the past with all all the pay per views that we've gotten so far. So hi McDuff. Yes, I know, baby. <laughs> He's jumping on me. Tiffany. Um, yes, a little bit of bubbly. I said it. Oh, you said it. I got drinking again. <laughs> We're getting nice and. <sighs> <laughs> hey, we gotta keep this exciting since we're offline all right. all right we're excited so okay but anyway um 
so after this, of course, like Arj Cassidy, love him. Um, we've gone into Matt and Nick training in 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 their uh, Nick's um, gym that he created, and we saw Brandon Cutler color footage. I love <laughs> I love it. I love it. But they said that they were training, that they're getting ready for private party. They're young. They're hungry. So let's go. So I'm excited for that. Then we went into JR. Uh, he announced that um, the, the next week was um, Nashville, Tennessee. We'll travel bug this year between like Arizona, New York, D.C., Baltimore. You've been all over the place. Oh, God. My mic was muted that whole time. <laughs> It's the bubbly is affecting me here. But anyways, uh, <laughs> for that silent part, I apologize, folks. Um, all I said was Nashville, Tennessee, November 13th in a small arena, Nashville Municipal Auditorium, um, AW on TNT, blah, 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 blah. That's all right. Um, I can always probably edit it out since we did this offline. <laughs> so I'm going to edit it out. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm editing that part out. Don't you worry. <laughs> anyways, this is good. See, Tiff, we're doing offline. Benefits. <laughs> Um, anyway, so yeah, Nashville. Um, I'm just hoping for somewhere around here, either Buffalo or Toronto. I mean, there's an arena here in Toronto that they could do. It's called the Coca-Cola Coliseum, Tiff, <laughs> and it's got the perfect seating for it. So I. <laughs> All right, no more bubbly for me. <laughs> I'm ke- I'm gonna keep going, but I'm not muted my mic anymore. <laughs> All right, don't mute your mic, but yeah. Um, so we went into BTE mailbag, and then we had Ooh. Kenny Omega. <gasps> what do? You- what was what the question? Oh my God, no! But he just didn't even read. No, he just oh. assumed he was like, I don't know. He was in a suit. Okay, his so this is what the, this is the thumbnail I seen. Yes, his hair was all messed up. Like he he was, I don't know. He was drunk. I don't I don't know what was going on here. He was talking about how that he lost the pack and and how he's gonna beat Moxley, but he does it for the fans. And he's all he was like, that he doesn't care that he loves the people. Whoa. It's all about the people. It was really a weird um, thing. Like, mm. what's going on, Kenny? Like, this is the the, the man, like, the... the <laughs> he's just... I just love how they're continuing this storyline. Like, the, they're continuing this being the elite nonsense, even into, the into like, we're almost at the TV show. It's just yeah. going to see what's going to happen now. This. I mean, they could probably still do it while the TV show. They're only doing one thing a week, Tiff. They still have time to do being the elite during the week. Yeah. And if Brandon Cutler is going to be on this, like, yeah. I, and if we need more Brandon Cutler, and I, and I, I just, I mean, me and Cutler are so huge. You guys know we're the big fucking fans of Brandon Cutler, and and he's big. like in charge of this. So, what? We're big fans. I was just saying we're big. <laughs> oh yeah, big, big, <laughs> big. This big, no. This big. Yeah, if you guys haven't realized by now that me and Kyle aren't big fans of Brandon Cutler, then you guys are under yeah. a rock. But, <laughs> but it was funny was because a- like Nick was in the room like editing the for the BAB Elite, mm-hmm. and he was with Matt. He's like, I can't put this into YouTube. <laughs> like, and then Matt's telling him how he was like, well, you know, we don't really get too much of Kenny on being the elite. Like, we have to. But this is where, if you guys notice, Nick was wearing a Marty Skrull shirt. Oh. What? Whoop whoop! <laughs> bring him home. Bring him. Bring him. Bring him to AEW. Oh, bring I him. love. It. I hope he brings his theme songs. I love that theme song. So I hope so. Um, I'm sure you guys can see Big Duff like jumping on me. Like uh, I don't know. Like <laughs> too many dogs. Too many dogs. Too many dogs. Too many dogs. Dog and regular dogs and dogs. like I, like hot dogs. <laughs> do you know how many people were asking me to say that in Chicago? So like Which they were like the Baltimore. They were like, yeah, like dogs. Things. You are a dog. Like, <laughs> it's just like me saying mozzarella. Like, <laughs> oh my god, he's usually sleeping right now. Anywho. But so is that it uh, for Beanie Lee? Um, and then we had oh a Luchasaurus with the. Uh, uh, BT mailbag, and he, they were asking if, if he's friends with Barney. <laughs> I read something interesting. This might make you really laugh, probably. Okay. I read something interesting about Barney today. Uh, apparently, oh, yes, I read that. The actor for Barney, uh, if you guys didn't know, um, is actually a uh, what is it called? A, pa- a tantric sex therapist, and he charges like three hundred and fifty dollars per hour, and it's just like what? Yeah. And then all I read were. The funniest comment, people are like, I will do it as long as he wears the suit. <laughs> the Barney suit. As long as he's in the Barney suit. I'm like, you sick fucks. 
Oh, anyways, I apologize for the swearing, guys. Bubbly's hitting me hard now. So, <laughs> anyway. Oh, I said it. Damn it. That's not fair. Why did we make this a drinking game? Because <laughs> me and Kyle are sick. <laughs> that's what so, happens when you have too many OBS issues. Yeah, I was going to say, that's how we roll on badass podcasts. <laughs> Whoa. You see this down, down here? There? That's not. That's AEP. Okay. <laughs> God. Sorry, I'm used to you and me like doing that coffee podcast. So like, you know, when we're doing oh, drinks Tiff, together. This is a different podcast. You know what happens <laughs> on this podcast? Shame. I think we're doing for that, but shame. Okay. Don't you shame me. You called this a different podcast. How dare you? <laughs> we're the one and only all elite podcast. Anyways, let's get into, is that it for being the elite? That's it for being the elite. <laughs> Yay, you did it. Hey. Again, because my ass can't watch it. <laughs> all right, let, let's, let's go. <laughs> Anyways, all right, yeah. Like 50 minutes this is going to be like, this is going to be like that one episode. I don't know if anyone's seen it. Jericho's uh, Talk is Jericho. He did, he has this like some, some, uh, he used to do these episodes called Talking Chop. And there's this one episode I I still go back to and listen. You guys have to listen to this. You'll laugh your ass off, seriously, from start to finish. It was in Japan while Jericho was still with WWE, or he wasn't with WWE, but he was doing a a podcast when there was a WWE tour in Japan. It was him, Carl Anderson, Luke Gallows, and they are wasted beyond belief. And they were interviewing (laughs) Braun Strowman, who was also drinking. This was the funniest podcast I've ever listened to. It was so funny oh my god you guys have to listen to this it's called just go on youtube type in talk is uh talking chop jericho braun Strowman interview and you'll you'll die for an hour and a half you'll die so funny anyway so this is what this is kind of turning into um so we get into the last segment thank god um the news and rumors for ollie wrestling we'll try to read these properly for you guys okay i'm starting to see the screen very differently but okay okay well (laughs) Tiff, I have it. I sent you the okay. copy of yeah. the uh, news right. rumors. Let's do this. And okay. you're starting off. Oh, so shit. take it away, Tiff. Be super kick. <laughs> All right. I, oh, sorry. <laughs> anyway, early AEW All Out pay per view buys. Okay, so AEW All Out was a big night at the company return for the second year in a row to watch a pack show in Chicago Sears Center. How many were? Pe- how many people were watching at home? The Wrestler Observer. Uh, newsletter has some preliminary numbers from the markets that have reported so far. It looks like AEW All Out did around 100,000 buys altogether. Whoa. That's amazing. I mean, I think that's amazing. Traditionally, pay-per-views are around 28,000, which is down from double or nothing. There you go. Or 35,000. You must take into account the fact that some fans obviously use BR Live because that number is reported up. Uh, it is not included how much BR Live is up since Double or Nothing because those numbers aren't released. Hmm, why aren't those numbers released? Um, it was reported that Fight TV was a bit down in overseas markets, but they still pulled a respectable number. 100,000 buys might not be amazing, but it does show an impressive start starting point. AEW doesn't have national exposure on a weekly basis. Let's see how let's see how good of a card AEW will stack out. Full, uh, for full gear after they had a month to build their stories on TNT. I mean, so it, it is true because we do talk about this all the time that, uh, like me, uh, you know, like I watch Being the Elite. I mean, obviously Kyle watches it too, but I went all the way back to get from the beginning. Um, but how do you get the casual fan? We talk about this every freaking week. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think once we get onto TV and once we get onto TNT, I think I think we're gonna get more. Yeah, and once they're showing with the title of this episode, TV 14, they're going to have more of that demographic that's going to tune in every single week and pay more attention to it. And um, you're going to get more buys. I know we're living in a day and age where it's easy, accessible to stream something for free, but to get 100,000 buys in that day and age is still really freaking good. Right. Um, so you have to account for that. So. Um, and give it time. Once AW sets going and we have a couple years in, I'm sure they're going to look into their own streaming service so they don't have to relate or rely on pay-per-view buys. They're already being backed by a billionaire, so that really helps. So that could come sooner than later. So just give it time as they start to build this company. If you're one of the, if you're a new watcher to AEW and you kind of, you, you know, you're already feeling sick and tired of it, just give it time. Give these guys time. It's all going to good thing. Those who come to wait, that motto is always stands true in my life. I always live by that motto. 
good things come to those who wait. So um, just wait, give it time. But that's that's incredible for bias for a pay for you like that in a day and age. Like I said, where streaming for free is so readily available, it's crazy. So um, even if you want to, don't even have to watch it live. You can watch it for free somewhere the day after. So yes, um, but don't don't support buy it. Absolutely. Um, so my turn. <laughs> Um, next article here, Cody Rhodes possibly hints at a new title. Ooh. Ooh. So yeah. Cody Rhodes recently did an interview with IGN. I saw he did that. I was re- uh, meaning to read this, uh, where he spoke about various AW topics during the interview. He hinted that AEW has considered creating a television title. I love that. I, lo- I know a lot of people I- love the television title concept. I'm all for that. Um, however, there are no plans at the moment. Uh, he quotes, there is a, there's a title we're considering, and it's something people can probably guess since we're going to be on TV, hint, hint, uh, but there's no plans for it at the moment. Right now, we revolve around AEW Championship, and in DC, we're going to name the first AEW Women's Championship, and that's a, such a beautiful belly. Yes, it's incredibly beautiful. Um, I don't know I, if people... What? I love the rose gold in it, and I'm not a big rose gold, but I, I love it, but keep going. He puts, I don't know if people know up close that rose gold is layered on it. He just said that. Yeah. <laughs> um, Brandy, Kenny. Okay, Brandy, Kenny Omega, and Tony did a great job getting that title. Okay, so those are the three uh, okay. behind that title. That, that's awesome. Uh, the first AW on TNT will take place in the Capital One Arena in Washington, D.C., where I'm going to. Uh, at this at this show, Rhodes is slated to wrestle Sammy Guevara in a, hot, in a, in a singles match. So he says they're looking at... A television title, which is probably not going to be in the works yet. I imagine they kind of want to get off, you know, get the ball rolling, get their titles defended, get meaning behind their current titles. And then eventually, if it feels like they need another title, which I know they want a mid-card title, I'm all for a television title. Love that concept. But we haven't even seen our tag team titles yet. Mm -hmm. Well, this is the thing. We were asked on Twitter about if we know what they're going to look like. Um, if you guys remember when they first advertised the DC poster for the women's title, it was a faded title in the background. It looks exactly how the new belt looks. So I imagine if you go to the, I believe it's Pittsburgh, that it says that they're, they're advertising with the tag team title blurred in the background. I imagine it's going to look something like that. So that's all I have for you. I couldn't find anything else. I'm going to go with that, and I'm going to assume it's going to look something like that. Yeah. And if it does, it looks good. So I'm sure they're going to do a good job. Both titles I, have been amazing so far. Yeah, both titles. Beautiful. I'm excited. It, they look like titles. They should be big. They should. It, yeah, this is how the title should look. They should so be huge. Awesome. They should be like, they look like championship belts. They don't look like a belt Strap- you bought from Walmart. Like the, the, <laughs> the, the what's it called? The the adhesive tape? Yeah. We are talking about that one time. <laughs> or you went to the crappy Target section and. Found a championship belt there, and I'm a champion. <laughs> Let me tell you, that belt, okay, that that Kyle threw me under the bus, whatever. I met this girl at All Out that was sitting next to me, and she. Oh, this had- is the the story. Yeah, this is the story. No, she had the belt, and it it was gorgeous. And I, me and Dottila were talking to her, and I actually asked her because Dottila was like, "Can I take a picture with it?" And so we wind up taking. We're like after the show because we didn't want to like bother her because I. Felt back because i kept banging into her with my big ass and whatever but we were talking she goes oh we're all friends here and stuff but she was awesome and let me tell you because i did ask her i was like i said that had to cost you a lot of money she said it was a birthday anniversary present so she didn't even know how much it was but that thing was heavy Mm -hmm. holy crap that thing was heavy like it's making me like want to buy the belt and i am not one to like want to buy belts or anything but I was like, damn, this is nice. And this would be nice in the background, in the Tiff Dome. So, <laughs> so t- the Tiff Dome. You, Anyways. Um, yeah, you called it the Tiff Dome. Anywho. But, um, all right. So let's that's a good on. story, though. When's the book come out? What? You're going to get smacked so hard when we're together, okay? I'm drinking a little bit of bubbly. Oh, that's it. <laughs> oh, shit. All right. Now. The next article, I talked very briefly, actually, last episode. Kylie Ray reports retires from pro wrestling. Uh, AEW was prepared to make Kylie Ray a big star for the company, but things just didn't work out. Uh, Ray disappeared 
not that long ago. She deleted her Twitter account, wasn't booked for a couple of AEW shows. Reports came out that she was dealing with a medical issue, but no details. Then it was revealed that she asked for her release from AEW and it was granted. Brad uh, Shepard reports that Kylie Ray is actually. What? I'm sorry. I had to sniff. I muted my <laughs> mic. Don't worry. No one heard what that. <laughs> like, what? What did I, I had to sniff. That New York accent. Okay. Brad Shepard reports that Kylie Ray is actually retired from pro wrestling. We're not sure what the details are at this point, but he suggests that Tony Khan shouldn't have tried to uh, feed transparency on things that he can't talk about. Quote from Brad, according to a source, former AEW pro wrestler Kylie Ray is now considered to be retired from pro wrestling. I'll say this much. Tony Khan would have been better off keeping his statement short and simple rather than fiend tramp, uh, transparency on details which he knows he can't discuss. This is unfortunate mm. because Kylie Ray was poised to be a big star in AEW, which I believe that. Um, she was praised for her attitude and commitment before AEW, double or nothing, but she has requested her release. Cody Rose even generated a little bit of a buzz when he said something about Kylie Ray doing Bailey's gimmick the right way. Another shot. Yeah. Well, so we were wishing Kylie Ray all the best as her she embarks on the next phase of her life, whatever she chooses to do. I mean, I see both sides of what Brad's trying to say, um, but it is unfortunate that at first I honestly thought it was like another company thing. Maybe she got offered a shit ton more money somewhere else, or you know, there was some sort of personal thing going on, but. We, it, it sucks that we've got the worst case scenario out of all of it that she's forced to retire from pro wrestling, which sucks. Like it, it, we've seen a lot of in, it, it happens with wrestlers. Guys. It comes with the sport. You yep. never know something like this could happen. It's it's something you. It's like what you, you another sport like football. There you go. Here's an analogy: football. Football players' career. You wonder why football players don't have a long career is because you th look at the sport that they're doing it's rough on your body like you can only take so much of it over the years so and unfortunately stuff like this in, in wrestling happens rather than the people that are oh wrestling's just fake well clearly not um so it, it is unfortunate and it looked like bailey was i mean she was one of the first women announced so like it, she was primed to be someone huge in a company and we see what, what they're doing with nyla so like you know she could have been that big star but it's it's an unfortunate situation so uh it's a yeah, shame. It is a shame. Best wishes, though. Yep. Next, we have who recruited John Moxley over to AEW? Ooh. I wonder who. This is an interesting story here, guys. So when John Moxley showed up at AEW's Double or Nothing, a lot of people were very surprised, but it was uh, not too shocking for others. Who got the ball rolling to bring Moxley over? Uh, fans had expected and hoped for Moxley's AEW debut as it happened. This is one of the main reasons why it keeps uh, upsetting certain fans who remain hopeful CM Punk is on his way in the same way. Mature Audiences Mayhem spoke to Chris Jericho recently, who is another huge name that landed in AEW. He revealed that it's possible his name helped gain a TNT deal, but he definitely had a hand in bringing John Moxley because he admitted to recruiting him. Wow. Uh, this is a quote from Chris Jericho. He says, and it's kind of in character here. He's like, if not for Chris Jericho being involved, maybe we don't get the deal with TNT. We don't get John Moxley, who I recruited, or Sammy Guevara, or Dean Malenko, a couple of guys you haven't seen you haven't seen yet. So I think that maybe I'm the great I'm not the greatest of all time, but the best longevity at, say, at staying at the top level in all these different areas and influ influencing quite a few of them. I don't know if there's too many people who have done that as much as I have. Uh, John Moxley is set to fin is set to be finished his MRSA recovery by October 2nd's TV debut. As it turns out, Moxley's involvement with AEW was apparently started through Y2J. Now it seems that we have another thing to thank Jericho for. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. If he, he like, I'm sure John Moxley was looking and saying, "Well, if Jericho, who's been a long time WWE follower, is going with this company and believes in this company and is." saying all these good things about it, I might as well go and believe his ass. So, Well, he, he, this was I'm pretty sure much... there was a lot of pull there. Yeah, but him even saying that, like, back then, months ago, that he wouldn't have done this if mm -hmm. he didn't believe it. So, so I mean, kudos to you, so thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Jericho. Thank you. We're having... We're celebrating with a little bit of the bubbly. Shit! You're lucky I don't have any more Jericho articles. Yeah. <laughs> Art articles? Art news articles? I don't know if I said that right. I don't know. 
God, we're at that point in the podcast, folks. If you're listening to this long, you know. (laughs) Sorry. Sorry. (laughs) Yeah, we're sorry. (laughs) So if it starts slurring, well, I'm probably slurring already and screwing everything up. So can you recite the alphabet backwards (laughs) for me, please? And walk in a straight line. (laughs) This is my nose. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Um, This is actually surprising to me. So backstage altercation at AEW All Out. AEW. I know, right? AEW is just getting started as a company, so the last thing they really need is a backstage fight, but they got one at All Out. We previously reported that Sadie Gibbs and Bea Priestley got into an altercation backstage. This happened after the Casino Battle Royale match was over. During the match, it appeared that Bea no-sold a press slam from Sadie before throwing her over the top. Uh, Gibbs tried to skin the cat and get back in the ring, but Priestley just threw her out. The once they got backstage... Once they got backstage, things exploded. The Wrestling Observer newsletter noted that some of uh, that heat between the two of them could have carried over to AEW from old heat in Japan. Quote from the Observer, Gibbs did a few cool moves. Priestley threw out Gibbs. There was communication issues between the two, perhaps stemming from problems in Japan, and there was issues after the match as well. It's a good thing that the backstage fight didn't ruin the night because it started off the entire show. Matt Jackson stepped in and played Peacemaker in the situation, so it's good that they had him around to put put on his executive vice president hat for a moment. That's crazy! Mm -hmm. Sorry, I just had to adjust my executive vice president hat in there. (laughs) Sorry, I'm EVP here. Oh God! Not well, of giggles, I'm, but of the podcast. I'm EVP of giggles. So. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Are we gonna have a backstage altercation now? <laughs> yes, let's go. We're gonna have a backstage altercation in Baltimore. I'm oh God! You guys heard it. This is like, you know, if this goes to court, just saying. <laughs> let's go. Ah. Thank you. Okay. Well then. <laughs> I can totally take you. Let's Anyways, go. Anyways, that's interesting. <laughs> that's I, crazy. I, I didn't, didn't know, know they had booty. I didn't know they had beef either. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't know this. So, hmm. um, I guess uh, they definitely kept it under wraps till now. Yeah. So, that's interesting. Uh, so the big t- or big big news here, which is the title of this podcast. Uh, thank God, because I'm about to slur my words even more now. <laughs> uh, AW going ahead with TV 14. For AW on TNT, as uh, previously noted, the All Elite Wrestling Weekly TV show on TNT will have a sports vibe, which I'm all about. Uh, Dave Meltzer reported this week that uh, the show will be categorized as a sports event on cable television listings. WWE has categorized themselves as entertainment. Uh, so there's the difference there. Number one, guys. Tony Khan has said many times that he wants to present a sports-based show, a sports-based show and wants to w- wins and losses to mean something, which I love that. Um, another interesting thing to note is that AW will be TV 14, not PG. Meltzer noted that the decision to be TV 14 was something agreed to several months ago, and TNT has given AW specific bylaws that they can't cross. So there's some bylaws there, so they're not completely, you know, F-bombing every other word. Um, both sides agree that the show will have a more edgy and risque than there to be programming. It is worth noting that Tony Khan has said that the hardcore stuff we've seen on their shows will be saved for pay-per-views. So don't expect to see thumbtacks every week on TNT. Thank God. Or else, you know, it gets, get, you know, it get boring yeah. basically. Um, on the latest investor conference call, Vince McMahon told investors that there to be has grant or has graduated from the blood and guts and, uh, has seemed ag- to agitate the notion that AW would be edgier than his PG product. There are some hints on Raw are getting a little bit edgier, but it remains seen to be seen how far they go since they have a PG rating and likely not to be able to do too much edgy stuff on Fox. It's a fun time to be a wrestling fan, folks. So uh, I love, I love. So basically, taking this or taking out of this this news article. Um, so we're going to be TV fourteen. There's bylaws, so they can't go too edgier. Tony Khan has said that we're not going to get the Cracker Barrel Clash every damn week on TV, which is great because yeah, again, it, it would get worn out. Is all I'm going to say. It should be special. Yeah. So he said he's going to see it for pay per views. He said uh, they're even looking at a blood, you know, like first blood type of pay per view kind of thing, and it, you know, it, it's good, and especially because they're not going to have a lot of pay per views a year. It's good to save it for pay per views. You focus on storyline in. Uh, their their weekly show you focus on sports based stuff and keeping that sports feel and what they mean by edgier is you know just you know less kid kiddie stuff you see on like Raw or SmackDown and more 
you know, what people want to see in wrestling. And that's what their focus is on. So Good. That's, that's what I love. Good. Yeah. I'm excited. So we knew that their pay-per-views were going to be TV 14. Now it's official that their weekly show is going to be TV 14. Given the all clear by TNT with the bylaws, cannot wait. I'm so excited. So, so yeah, excited. we're less than a month away, folks, from AW on TNT. I'll be there at the first taping. So if you guys are there live, come say hi to me, find me, tweet me, DM me, do what you got to do. Reach, get in touch with me. We'll hang out. We'll have a drink, whatever you want to do. I'll come in the concourse. I'll come meet you. We'll have a beer. Um, I'll probably be drinking a lot that day. Um, so, uh, not a lot. I want to enjoy myself. So, um, anyways, I'm not going to get too much of the bubbly and me. Sorry. I have to, we're going to about to end the show there, Tiff. <laughs> the bubbly. Ooh. Uh, yeah, I'm not chugging that. <laughs> I won't be able to do the outro anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, I hope you enjoyed this offline edition of the podcast, which it won't be a regular thing. Just this week's episode. Um, it will, I hope you enjoyed everything we, we've done up to this point. I hope you enjoyed the rest of the podcast. We're an hour and 11 minutes in here. Um, it was a good time. <laughs> a good time. So uh, we have something lined up in the works right now, another interview for AEP. So stay tuned. We have another interview for Under the Ropes. So we have two interviews lined up right now. So you guys are going to want to follow us on social media to keep up to date with what's going on here in the network and here on the podcast. So all links for you to follow are down in the description for you below. Any other links are located down there as well. Like I said, I'm updating the t-shirt website. So it's going to be a big update soon. And uh, guys, keep an eye out for anything else related with the podcast. And thank you very much for tuning back into this. If you're watching it back, if you're listening on the go, Really do appreciate all the support and the kind words you guys give us every each and every single week. You have no idea how much it means to myself and Tiff um, with, you know, what the world is today and what Twitter is like and all the negativity that's out there. We do appreciate the kind words and and love you guys and all the support you have for this podcast. So thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, that's going to wrap it up, guys, for this episode of the All Elite Podcast, episode number 40, the 40th anniversary, celebrating with a little bit of the bubbly here on the podcast. Um, sorry, Tiff. I know you have no more. I can't. I'm doing an outro. I can't sip this right now. Um, I'm your host as always. The <laughs> God. <I'm laughs> Tiffany just chugged their thing. <laughs> Any who's. Little... I'm the host of the Ollie podcast. He's self-proclaimed greatest host. Kyle Masters doing this intro out properly. Joined by my co-host. She's the executive vice president of Giggles. The heartbreak chick. <laughs> Tiffany, guys, we'll see you to drunk Tiffany. We'll see you guys next time for the next episode of the All Elite Podcast. I-